Minister in the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment between 2004 to 2009. It is a great honor to have such a distinguished personality amidst us. Let us express ourselves in the truest knowledge, sorry, language of appreciation and adoration. Aapka samman karne ka kripaya hame mauka de. I request Honorable Speaker Sri Rajendra Arlikar to honor the former diplomat and Honorable Speaker of Lok Sabha, Shrimati Meera Kumar. I also request the dignitaries to be part of the ceremony. A gesture of warmth and adoration is also being expressed towards Honorable Speaker Sri Rajendra Arlikar. I request Srimati Meera Kumar to present a memento to Sri Rajendra Arlikar. Thank you. This gesture of appreciation and adoration will always remain as a memory to be cherished. Ye khub surat pal, shandar yadgar bankar hamari dilo mein sada rahenge. Honorable Speaker Srimati Meera Kumar, it's our privilege to hear you today. Kindly honor us with your address. How I khub khushi asa tum chamate. Going Vidhan Sabhicha Bhangra Utsavi Samaram Bhakam Tumka Parpidita. On this historic occasion, I congratulate the people of Goa for strengthening democracy in their state. I felicitate each and everyone present here, particularly Honorable Governor, she Bharat Veer Manchu, and I'm grateful to you, sir, for your very kind words to me. Honorable Speaker Sri Rajendra Arlikar, thank you so much for inviting me and giving me a chance to address this August gathering. Honorable Chief Minister Sri Manohar Parikar, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister Sri Fernandez de Souza, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Shri Pratap Singh Rani, Honorable Deputy Speaker Shri Anand Shet, all the existing and former members of the Assembly, and Secretary of the Vidhan Sabha Shri Neelkant Subedar. Tumhala Navya Varsh Cha Shubhecha. May 2014 usher in joy, prosperity, and good health for all of you and your families. Your state is known for its picturesque landscapes, golden beaches, azure sea, and above all, its large-hearted people. I have experienced the warmth of your welcome ever since my arrival here. It far exceeds what one hears of your legendary hospitality. I thank you for the affection you have bestowed on me. Goiche he bhangar yo pacho maka bhogban labla satrangancha chaliriti jemraval utsav daej Bhangraj, goeche he bhangraje buicher anidarya sangmacher yo pacho maka bhuman labla. Saat rangancha indrithanu vanta hangasali chalirati jevravad utsav daej parampara hache pratinithit goe karta. Darya ani darya vedu hai cha bhai rui. Goichi ani kui valkha asa, shikriyani varsa, savan goe he vansh dharm ani pur paschim sanskritaye che milan kendra asa, jaka lagun urvarit bharata 
भारता परस आपली खाशेली जीवन पद्धत दाखयता गोयच्या धर्मनिरपेक्ष गुणांक लागून गोयान अखंडित आणि लांब कालाची परंपरा आशिल्लो धार्मिक एक चार दिष्टी पडटा फ्रॉम मायथॉलॉजी टू द मॉडर्न टाइम्स गोवा हॅज फार द इमॅजिनेशन ऑफ द पीपल अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड इट फाइंड्स मेन्शन इन द भीष्म पर्व ऑफ महाभारत एस गोमांत इट हॅज विटनेस द रूल ऑफ किंग्स लाईक देवराज भोज कापरदी बर्मन चंद्र बर्मन षष्ठ देव द फर्स्ट शिवाजी अँड शंभाजी इट इज लँड वे सेंट फ्रान्सिस झेवियर टॉट कम्पॅशन एन्ड सर्विस टू मॅन काइंड द से कथिड्रल द सांता कॅथरिना अँड द बॅसिलिका ऑफ बॉम्ब जीजस अट्रॅक्ट पिलग्रिम्स फ्रॉम ऑल ओव्हर द वर्ल्ड हु एव्हर कम्स यर वन्स इज कॅप्टिबेटेड बाय इट्स चॉम आय हॅव द ऑनर ऑफ प्रेझेंटिंग the 42nd gyan peet award to the noted author shri ravindra kelkar in your beautiful city in july 2010 it was indeed a moving experience for me to interact with a writer of his stature who had taken konkani literature to such great heights more than 5 decades have passed since goa daman and deu were liberated from portuguese rule in 1961 it was a milestone in indian history symbolizing the end of our relentless struggle against colonialism on this occasion let us also recall the valor of great freedom fighters like dr t b kunha Mark Fernandez, Mohan Rana Day, Purushottam K. Kakodkar, Dr. Jack Sequeira, Anthony De Souza, and millions of others who strive with extraordinary courage to make democracy a reality. We are very proud to have installed the portrait of the father of Goan nationalism, Dr. T. B. Kunha, in our Parliament Museum in December 2011, it has enhanced the prestige of our parliament since the first election in 1963 the people of your state have zealously preserved democratic ideals they have enthusiastically participated in electing their representatives and have toiled day and night to achieve excellence in diverse fields It is due to their hard work and tenacity that Goa has marched ahead on the path of progress. With a literacy rate of 87.4%, a decadal growth rate of 8.17, it is amongst the most developed states. I compliment the people of Goa on their accomplishments. The Legislative Assembly of Goa, Daman and Diu, which met on this day in 1964 in the Adil Shah Palace, is a testimony to the faith of the people of Goa. It has enacted numerous forward-looking legislations like the Goa Agricultural Tenancy Act, the Goa Right to Information Act, and the Goa Right of Citizens to Time-Bound Delivery of Public Services Act. its members have been fervently raising issues close to the people's hearts i would especially like to congratulate the members of the first legislative assembly and the women representatives the golden jubilee is indeed a befitting occasion to acknowledge their remarkable contributions Democracy has now been widely accepted as the best means of fulfilling the hopes and aspirations of the electorate. People from diverse cultures are struggling to adopt this form of governance. In fact, the Arab Spring which swept the Middle East was a manifestation of this urge. We are fortunate to have adopted for we are fortunate to have opted for democracy at the dawn of independence. it has taken deep roots and we are the largest functioning democracy in the world the substantial voter turnout in the recently concluded election in four states demonstrates the confidence of our citizens in this system with the world 
Metamorphing into a global village, public expectations have soared. Our informed citizenry expects better health care and educational facilities, improved infrastructure, and an international quality of life. However, along with the affluent class, some of whom are amongst the wealthiest in the world, we also have about 350 million people living in dire poverty. As legislators, we have to balance the contrasting requirement of both ends of the spectrum and ensure that the benefits of development reach the poorest and the weakest. We have to be game changers. Our democracy must be the most inclusive democracy in the world. I firmly believe that to succeed in our quest for a golden tomorrow, we have to first shed our prejudices and change mindsets. It causes me acute anguish when I read in the newspapers about caste discrimination and atrocities. I wonder if this is what our forefathers had dreamt of. Our constitution envisages human rights and equality to one and all, yet it has not translated into reality. It is incumbent upon us to herald a social awakening and stop at nothing short of dismantling the caste system. Today, with the latest means of technology available to us for disseminating information, we must, through our irrefutable arguments and powerful speeches, both within and outside the legislature, generate debates and ins inspire people to read, rid themselves of prejudices. A leader is the one who can transform mindsets. To make our democracy truly representative, we must expand the ambit of our democratic institutions. And how do we do this? By increasing the participation of women in these institutions. Affirmative action in the Panchayati Raj institutions have brought about 1.2 million women to the center stage of development. <coughs> However, there are millions who still subsist in abject poverty and are not permitted by the existing social norms to have their say even in minor decisions affecting them or their family. It is this barrier that we have to break. Your role as public representatives in founding a gender-sensitive society cannot be overemphasized. I believe that strengthening of existing gender-sensitive laws is one way of ensuring empowerment of women. In addition, we can focus on gender equality by establishing specialized committees or empowered gender units in legislatures and by raising gender capacities. This region, Goa, has had many outstanding women at the helm of affairs in the 7th century AD, Queen Vajira Mahadevi served as the governor of this province during the Padami Chalukya dynasty. Later, Kadamba Queen Kamla Devi emerged as a patron of architecture and educational institutions. Your erstwhile chief minister, Srimati Shashi Kala Kakotkar, and the first woman member of your legislative assembly, Srimati Urmila Lima, Litao remain symbols of women empowerment. I hope this legacy continues uninterrupted. We are an ancient civilization with a young population. It disturbs me to watch our youth getting increasingly disillusioned with the elected representatives and the legislatures. They associate the parliament and the legislatures with disturbances disruptions, and low productivity. They have questioned the very relevance of these institutions. This is indeed worrisome. It falls upon us to dispel this perception. We have to reach out to our younger generation and bridge this trust deficit. The best way to convince them would be to effectively spend each minute of the house in intense debates, stimulating discussions and thorough scrutiny of governmental policies and programs. Corruption is a major cause of disenchantment with our institutions. 
The man on the street has begun to view the legislature and the government as being synonymous with delays and corruption. We must understand that the process of evolving consensus, which is the keystone of democracy, is time consuming. But problems arise when red tapism and ulterior motives lead to inordinate delays. We have been chosen by our constituents to address these grievances, and this is an issue which has agitated them for long. The solution lies in transparent and responsive governance. The recent enactment of Lokpal and Loka Youth Act 2013 is a welcome step. I think Goa took a lead in it. But it has to be supplemented by our resolve to eliminate corrupt practices. No legislation can be more powerful than the way society thinks. The inclination to fight against corrupt practices and social evils has to come from within. We legislators have to spearhead this campaign, drawing moral strength through our own unimpeachable conduct. We have to question these malpractices and encourage the people to stand up against them. I wish you all success in this crusade. I once again extend my greetings to you, especially the people of Goa, on this momentous occasion. Before I end, I want to read out a poem. Goethe na vat karun lan jale mahan var khadechi devra jale lam lamarti ve pran rakta che tel karun raj jagaili sansara chi shant karun tan bhagaili dhai diko gaeta tache phaiche yashugan goethe na vat karun lan jale mahan var khadechi devra jale lamarti ve गोव्यातील जनते करून मिळालेले प्रेम आणि आपले पनामुळे मला खूप समाधान वाटते